The perspectives of women throughout history are usually marginalized and often invisible due to culture and their gender. We will be exploring the history of Filipino women and all their struggles in the past, during the time where the Philippines was blossoming and becoming the modern nation it is today. We will also look into the first-hand experiences of a Filipina immigrant and a first-generation Filipina woman. The brief history of Filipino women proves to be a difficult one, but through hardship has emerged into what it is today. Through all time, there are many instances where crimes are hidden from society. The existence of comfort women is one of them. As stated in class, a comfort woman were women who were forced to sexually relieve Japanese soldiers during the war. The races that were included were Japanese, Korean, Chinese, Taiwan, Philippine, Dutch, and Indonesian. In Holt's book, When the Elephant Stands, we see her experience when she was taken as a comfort woman by the Japanese soldiers. As quoted, when I peek through the bushes, I see women of all ages walk in a single file line, heading towards Malina. Japanese soldiers walk beside, herding them forward like carabos. Page 136. Post World War II, there were many women who were migrating to the United States of America during the year of 1948 Education Exchange Act. However, this was in relatively small numbers, as stated in the book Contemporary Asian America, Interdisciplinary Reader. Nurses who had already begun moving from the Philippines to the United States following the 1948 Education Exchange Act emigrated in even greater numbers following the passage of the Health Professions Assistance Act in 1976. From here, we see that many women began migrating even heavier. This was as a fact of the Health Professions Assistance Act, where they were getting help in medical, assist in medical pharmacies from immigrants. These nurses were what served during the during the World War II period in helping, in helping soldiers, healing them if they were injured in battle. These women had already obtained good skills in treating others from, that, from those experiences. This is where many women went if they wanted to be recruited to the United States. With their background in the Philippines, and with being so closely connected to the United States, they were taken in large numbers to fulfill the need for, med for medical workers, thanks to their connection to the United States. During the 1940s and 50s, there was an increase of number of Filipino women becoming war brides. War brides can be defined as a term used in reference to foreign women who marry military personnel in time of war or during their military occupation of foreign countries. This 1950 Family Act, also known as War Brides Act, described the process and the limitations of entry of alien spouses and minors and children of the United States Armed Forces citizen. The immigrants trying to enter the United States were subject to medical examinations. If there were any disabilities, the Immigration and Naturalization Services would notify the public medical officer of their local community. These factors led to family reunification, skilled, and become professionals. Quote, as social ways of doing, culture practices do not have hard or fast lines of demarcation. Even in principles of social organization, such, such as gender, class, and nation, may appear to confine particular ways of doing given social groups. For example, women, workers, and Filipinos. The next topic in our presentation is about Filipino women in contemporary society. Immigrant communities, retention, and reinvention of their culture connects them to their country of origin while allowing them to form their own socio-cultural claims to their new country, according to Esprit de uh, We have been a colony of America for so long, so we have adapted their beliefs or practices. We are Catholics, and many Americans are Christians, so we do have some similarities. Both of our interviewees discuss a common theme for resisting assimilation. They consistently mention the retention of culture as well as adaptation of Filipino culture to American culture via the creation of a third space through food and celebration of traditional American holidays such as Thanksgiving and July 4th. Oh, I always teach my kids. My youngest child is born here, so I taught her how to eat using her hand. I made her love Filipino food and taught her the language. 
So we do celebrate all American holidays. We have a mixture, mixture of American and Filipino dish all the time. Most of my co-workers in the hospital are Filipinos. When we have potlucks, we bring Filipino food that my mom cooked for us. Both me and my mom kept our Filipino traditions. I think celebrating American holidays is what cultural traditions we adopted. According to De Jesus, a common stereotype or understanding of Filipina women is that they are dedicated to their family units and are often submissive homemakers. The interviewees we spoke with for this project articulated that Filipina women are breaking boundaries and surpassing stereotypes by stepping out of the common roles in the household and creating careers as professional women. Um, as a woman, it is my responsibility to take care of my kids, like cook for them, do their laundry, clean the house, and things that our regular women do. Since I am now a professional, I took the responsibility of helping to provide with my family. I don't believe that women must be good at cooking and cleaning. They should also provide for their families too. From what I've been taught, women should take care of their families as well. But now it's different. We are living in the 21st century. Men should also take care of their families too. A spiritual claims that women are responsible for upholding the moral character and outward perception of the Filipino-American community. Um, the power structures within my family is whoever is the oldest will be in power. Typically, my, I should have the most authority than my husband. Younger siblings should respect their older siblings by never calling them in their first names. Younger siblings should call them brothers or sisters. In my family, my husband usually make me decide on almost anything. Feminism, as per the definition of De Jesus, describes a specific form of feminist theory rooted in the Filipina-American experience, an experience very different from the implicit and thus explicit subject of white liberal feminism. She continues that feminism demarcates the space for Filipina-American struggles against the cultural nationalist and patriarchal narratives that seek to squash their collective voice in the name of ethnic solidarity. Our interviewees have unique experiences and knowledge that shape their perspectives as Filipina-American women. Though they both revere Filipino culture and aim to retain their culture, they either break from stereotypes and expected gender roles or voice, voice their support in doing so. So, um, women in a professional work field is a wonderful thing. In fact, uh, my daughter is one of them. Filipina women should follow their dreams. So... Their families have someone who they are proud of. This never interferes with our culture and traditions because, I mean, uh, we're Filipinas. My mom is right. Being a professional woman is not an insult in our culture or traditions.